the twi- the twi- the twittering i'm going to kind of go into a bit of detail on this now just re- retweeting an, an early tweet i've done um because going from text into sound i think is very uh interesting we we need it for access accessibility um and we that that is something that we get into a, quite a lot on this show and also on the wild show and the the wild show is repeated on access all all aerials so they they look at that a a lot Um, but it's also going mainstream the voice interface with computers is a a major trend I think and it's it's sort of working at home with Alexa and other other things as well Um, and I think at um, at BET there's probably going to be more of that. Obviously BET radio is entirely sound. Well, there's a little bit of video as well. You can find you can find it on on YouTube as a sort of podcast, or I think there's a there's a direct streaming. Can't remember. I, I, might, I might try and find that later on. What the what the direct streaming is, but um, this this is also interesting that. Uh, you can find journal articles online that are in the first place Creative Commons which makes it easier to use it on on radio and secondly um, goes well it goes into sound as well so I'm gonna I'm gonna play this this clip and uh, see what see what John thinks of it this is a very short trip uh, short clip um, but I wonder if this is the kind of voice you would listen to for a long time. Mm. So here, 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 it, here it is. Bring the, bring the faders down. The competing utopic imaginaries of lifelong learning humanistic emancipatory or utilitarian economistic continued to be played out in digital education through other high-profile hype cycles, most notably perhaps the massive open online courses. MOOCs, trend which peaked in 2012-13 as LearnDirect was declining. As Knox, Citation 2015, and others have documented, the early classification of MOOCs as either CMOOCs, distributed, networked, collaborative, non-hierarchical and self-directed, or XMUCS, corporate, content-driven, linear and transmissive, quite readily mapped onto the two lifelong learning paradigms. Both forms contained a utopian impulse. In the case of the CMU CS this was articulated in terms of the emancipatory power of personal learning networks and distributed, community-engaged learning. In the case of the XMU CS it was focused on the power of technology to enable learning to massively scale, with potentially huge gains for accessibility, population upskilling and global reach. The XMOOC model quickly came to dominate as the power of elite institutions of higher education converged with the platform economics of increasingly commercialized providers, Coursera, edX, FutureLearn, to lock down the imaginary of what MOOCs currently rebranded for the most part as simply short courses might be. Both models have their silences regarding what kind of subject gets to be a lifelong learner, assuming an idealized individual who is naturally highly motivated self-directed and willing to align themselves to an Anglo-US model of learning and knowledge production, see Bali and Sharma Citation 2017. Knox Citation 2016. Digital technologies have been dropped as the primary delivery mode for skills training in the most current UK government program, Skills for Jobs, Lifelong Learning for Opportunity and Growth, replaced by a push for a more fundamental reconfiguration of higher and further education, UK Government Citation 2021. Yet lifelong digital and data skills development agendas continue to sit at the heart of its broader vision. This is particularly the case where it connects to industrial and innovation strategies such as the National AI Strategy, UK Department of Culture, Media and Sport and Office for Artificial Intelligence Citation 2021. The competing utopic imaginaries So, John, what, what do you make of that just as a voice? That was two and a half minutes, but would you oh. listen to that for a long time? No, not particularly. No. No. 
So, more work needed on the voicing. Yes, but the voicing has been like it for years because if you were re if you were using a screen a uh, screen reader, yeah, on the computer, if a blind person was using a screen reader, that's what the screen reader would sound like. So, the voices the the, the voices aren't going any better. No. So yeah, that's that's what you have to listen to, I'm afraid. Anyway. Uh, hmm. Okay. Well, that's another. All right. So that's one thing we'll look out for. Bet is if they've if they've got better voicing. Uh, Good luck with that. <laughs> well, well, we'll have a look. Or if so, if anybody's, um, you can find the link through 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 Twitter, W E N O T N O, or Sean Bain wrote wrote the, the article about utopia digital education utopia um and so look for s bain on twitter or search on uh digital education utopia should should find it and um it's, it's very it's very interesting because it covers a utopian vision and a current reality but fairly, it's, it's fairly well knitted together. The only the only thing I'd say is there, were, there was another year of the MOOC during lockdown. Uh, it wasn't just in 2012. Um, edX was sold by Harvard and MIT for 800 million dollars. There was a lot of enthusiasm at that time. So what what's happened since? We'll get we'll come back to that another day, or maybe at bet somebody will explain. What has happened and what happens next? Mm -hmm. okay. we'll, we'll see. So we'll we'll and we'll carry on, John. When, when we get back, I think sort of February, March, we'll we'll sort of follow up on mm. what we discover as we go along. Okay. 